Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along to the vlog. I've been sat here this morning on the brewery management system, and we are gearing up. We're gearing up to order, well, brew again. So I've ordered, get it in the right order. I've ordered some more hops today. I've ordered some malt today, and hopefully, uh, We'll be able to start brewing on Monday, provided everything comes in time. Look out there. We are looking pretty good. I've just got to reorganise a few more bits and get these tanks up and clean today. Check an email, see if my malt man's ready for me to collect some malt. Because he's, uh, he's not back to work fully yet, so I'm going to have to go and pick it up. Or at least send Stuart. What time is it? Oh, it's 1.55. And I've just finished the admin, so I'm going to go downstairs now and start cleaning. So we've got some uh, flake barley. I'm afraid it hasn't made the cut. That's out of date. And whilst this one is still effectively still in date, I think I'm going to take that home, feed the chickens with it. So I've got the CIP running on the boil kettle. It's, it's really exciting. It's like it's... It's first maiden voyage all of a sudden. You know, for some reason it kind of looks different. I think I put the chimney on on a different angle. It's a little bit tight on these clips. That could just be me. So uh, we've got a bit of a leak just under here. We always kind of had that. It's uh, just coming out between the lid and the seal. Never really had a great seal. So it's something that we just live with on the CIP process. I could squeeze a bit of silicon under there if I wanted to, but it's no, bo no bother, really no bother. Everywhere else is fine. Just means we get a little bit of caustic running down there. But what it does tell us is that the spray ball is hitting every single surface on the inside. In fact, you can hear it. It's quite a powerful jet because I modified the spray balls a little bit to concentrate the jets facing upwards which is why we get a little bit coming out of there and the same on these tanks as well we'll have a little leak out of the lids because we can't seal them properly because they're not pressure rated vessels but it's just one of those things that we live with and then when we're finished at the end of the day or after the CIP cycle just rinse that caustic it's just bleach basically just rinse that down the drain and away so Shouldn't be a problem for us, but you know, if one of the dogs come in, we don't want them to get it on the paws. If they come in with Gemma and run up the stairs or something like that, not really an issue though. I better move this cable out the way while I'm doing that so we don't get caustic on the cables. I'm a tight ass, aren't I? I should have put a new cable on that instead of an old one. Um, yeah, next job is going to be acid for the HLT just a little bit of I may as well show you the lids dried now there's just a little bit of powder on the walls you can't really see it can you just it's, it's not much at all tiny little bit of lime scale one or two little bits of rust kind of just right down in that corner there that's not rust on the tank itself, but that's when I've cut through the tank wall with the plasma torch and a little bit of the swarf has stuck to the side. You kind of see it replicated over here, so I could scratch that off. But it's not a problem, the acid will get rid of that as it pacifies the tank. So I've got to put a bit of water in there, it doesn't need to be a lot at all, just about five litres with some acid in. We'll set a pump up for this and we'll get reset going on that, reset going on that and then when this has done its job because we put in some pretty good cleaner today we're using the Chloroquest which contains sodium hypochlorite and that's uh, quite, a, quite a strong um, bug killer as well as cleaner also has some sequestering agents in there as well to help lift any grime or anything that's kind of 
adhere to any surfaces, remove any biofilms that we might have inside the pipework. We shouldn't though because it was all cleaned before we put it to bed. So I'm just going to close this handle now which will prevent the, the bottom takeoff from supplying the pump and it will have to pull the liquid through here then sanitising these legs of the steelwork. So we just stick that up. You should hear a change in tone. I can tell, I don't know if you can on the video. So now it's pulling its supply through this pipeline. Sometimes you get a bit of air in the pipe and it creates a little bit of a vortex or vacuum. So that's, uh, that's going well. I want to mix up some acid and set the pump and we'll turn on the HLT for a clean. I think half an hour recirc, way too much. Look at that. Beautiful, shiny. What uh, lime scale deposits are you talking about? There's none there. So anyway, let's have a look in the boil kettle as well. I think this is going to look lovely in here. Oh yes. And you can see we've got the paddle in there as well. The wooden paddle just to give it a soak through. Kill any nasties that might have taken up residence on there during the uh, hibernation of the brewery, shall we say. So that is finished, but I'm not. So what I'm going to do is transfer all of that caustic into the mash tun. And then we're going to set up the mash tun to, um, yeah, am I going to do it that way? I don't know. I might just keep them in the boil kettle, actually. What I want to do is all of these buckets that I mix grains in and cleaning chemicals and all that kind of stuff, I want to give them a hit as well with it. So I'll probably just drop them in. I'll drop all these in the boil kettle and anything else that's made out of plastic that's been sat for a while. Maybe the jugs. No, the jugs don't need doing. I can do them manually. But yeah, I'm going to chuck them in to the boil kettle, turn it back on again. But as far as it goes in terms of this nitrocid, I'll just put that in the drain. There we go. That's done its job. So now I need to thoroughly rinse all the pipework simply because we have copper pipes on there and if there's any residue at all of the uh, nitrocid it will just devour, absolutely devour the copper and cause it to uh, dissolve. Well scratch that idea. We ain't gonna fit them in are we you plonk. So what I might do instead is transfer into this bin and sit the buckets in it like that. And then this can just sit over here and they can soak for an hour or two while I do another job. So we've got a rinsed out, a little bit coming out of the bottom here. Just wanted to show you the head pressure on the HRT pump. So there she blows. If we go up just have a peek. So this is draining down here as well as being sucked in by the pump so it's doing quite well actually. There's what's left in the bottom of the tank. If we weren't draining at the same time I think the pump would be fed more and we'd get a little bit of a stronger flow on here but as you can see that just with one of those brew pump 3000s as they call them in the homebrew community. What's one of these little bad boys down there, look. Just mounted to the leg. He gives a good, uh, good head pressure, plenty of flow. That's enough to transfer the hot water across to the mash tun during a brew day without any problems. In fact, sometimes it's too fast, which is why we've gone down the underback and Valentine route or the Grant and Valentine route. But I'm really pleased how clean that's come up. So it's just a case of letting that empty now so I can turn that HLT pump back off. We'll just let this drain 
and then I'll close that outlet underneath there we'll put the lid on and we'll seal her up so that is actually good news in terms of the quality of the water going into the brew that's the first time I've had to descale the HLT which means our water whilst it is hard it isn't that bad temporary hardness so I think that's just going to be an annual job really it's had more than a year of service I mean yeah I've hit it a couple of times with a uh, Persid so I suppose you could say it's been it's been descaled in that respect but this is the first time I've used nitrosid the proper stuff for it so I think next job probably while I've got you in hand I'll turn the boil pump back on there we go so this is going through the whirlpool arm at the moment so if I close this off I'll just leave it cracked a little bit to take the pressure off I'm gonna fill this dustbin is it alright there? I think it'll be alright there so we're just gonna open this supply here and that will run all of this caustic through the hose and into the dustbin we don't want to go too fast at the minute I don't want to be splashing that chloroquest everywhere but once we get a little bit of volume in the bottom of the tank we can start to turn the pressure up a touch and get that transfer going and then when all this liquid's being moved out of the boil kettle into here we'll just dunk these buckets in let them bleach up have a soak and clean themselves up and while that's happening I'll be rinsing out the boil kettle and getting it ready to have an acid rinse with just the Persid ready for a brew day on Monday so I'll rinse today but I won't be doing the Persid until Monday morning when I start the brew day it really does take a long time to clean everything up let's kill this light there we go that's the light oh zoomed in to the hops the grain store that's what grain we've got that's the pale malt we've got four bags and a half well there's some maris otter and some mild malt and stuff there but that is going to do me a brew on Monday and then on Monday afternoon Stuart's going to the maltsters to pick up a ton 40 bags of mixed malts we've got everything here soaking in cleaning solutions the buckets, the paddles everything really just to make sure it's all nice and clean and ready to go we've got the boil kettle with just with rinse water in it so I can turn that off I can turn that off we're filling up the HLT as we speak so that's just uh, just water going in there lids back on little tip I'll turn this off as well this pump can sit overnight with the cleaning solution in for tomorrow I'm going to transfer it's going to go from there to there to there to number four and then dispose so a little tip on the HLT don't put a fitting around the top RJT so two reasons one it's very convenient to add to your water treatment your acids you just shoot it in there and secondly if by accident the elements fail on and this becomes a kettle and starts boiling it'll prevent it from exploding because this will blow off allowing it to vent steam it shouldn't happen but it could happen but I'm quite confident that this uh, ain't gonna be a problem but anyway a little tip for you there just in case you're wondering why there isn't an RJT nut on the top of that so we've got all that cleaned all this hot side ready to go just need to pull the mash tun back in when I've 
finish cleaning all of this, all of these buckets. Got some fittings to go onto the other fermenters as and when. Five, six, seven, and eight still need to be pulled out and varnished. And uh, a brewing Monday. I'll probably be in tomorrow and Sunday though, just to pull the pilot kit out, give that a clean down, and I also want to strip the kitchen back and clean the shelves, dust everything down, get rid of some crap that we don't need, put stuff away, this, that and the other, and tidy it up generally. Anyway, it's Friday, it's 5.15, it's time for Cracker Jack, it's time to go home. So that's it, you finished packaging, you're listening to me aren't you thinking, what a plonker. <laughs> Alright, yeah, no, carry on. All right. Well, are these all going out? No, they're not. They're not. Oh yeah. That's for my mate Morrit. Send me some money, you fucker. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.